Hey guys, welcome back to High Step V2 Gaming, and um, well, today we're going to look at the BTS V, a very, very rare, for now, tier 3 Russian tank. It was exclusive only for people who bought the World of Tanks Collector's Edition from Russia. However, due to recent events, it is now on sale in all servers across the world, I would say. Um, it was always on sale on the Chinese server, but... On normal wargaming servers, it is now on sale with $100 worth of gold. I cannot remember how much gold it is, and I'm, I don't really want to check because it's not worth my time to check on this tank. I never once considered buying it from my North American account, but I have it here on the Chinese account. I've had it for a while. It's only $5 in China because they don't have special premium tanks. Like, Well, I guess they do. Um, we'll talk about the garage. On, uh, sorry, the premium shop in China because... They do have a $500 tank, 50% off, but we'll talk about that later on a different episode. Right now, we're just going to talk about the BTSV, and for a $5 tank, yeah, maybe you get this. For a $100 tank, well, watch this, watch this review and make up your mind. I've already got my opinion set in stone, and it will not change no matter how many games I've played. Because when I first saw this tank, I saw the armor, and I thought, oh, that looks cool. And as we're going to look into Tank Inspector later on, the armor, it it doesn't really behave as well as it should. Well, actually, no, that's, that's incorrect to say. The armor does behave better than it should, but the armor does not, it's not on paper as good as it looks. So the armor, I guess it does behave the way I initially thought, but once you look at this, it's only 25 millimeters of hull armor in the front, 25 at the side, and 16 at the rear. The turret is 25 all around, but it's sloped on like a 50 degree angle. So you'd expect 25 on a 50 degree angle, you'd be looking at... Well, you would like to see um, 50 millimeters of armor, but in reality, it's only about 35. Now, I didn't check my math on it, but I believe this should be like 40 around there uh, with the math. But, I mean, it's wargaming. You never know if the math is correct or not. So, this tank, it's just, well, what is it, really? Now, you may see it and may think it's like a turtle with glasses on. And, yeah, sure, you might think that. Um, amphibious? Yeah. Sure, reasonable. Now, this tank, let's start it off. It is a BT-7, essentially, with added side armor. You can already see, like, it's got kind of a different turret. And But look at this. You can still see that area there. It is definitely a BT-7 um, hull, and they just added on side squirts to it. So I'd give you a whole rundown of the whole BT series, but you guys already know it's like a Christie invention. Nothing too special about it. What they want to do here is make the BT with more armor, and they thought they could do it for a relatively um, weightless design. So they, the Soviet engineers saw the FCM-38. I can't remember the whole uh, name for it, but they had welded on plates, and it made it more angled, better armor, and because it was welded on, it wasn't that heavy. Like, the whole thing wasn't, like, it wasn't filled up completely. So they're like... Maybe we can make a lightweight tank, just like the BT-7, but with angled armor. And that kind of worked for the T-34. I mean, you angle the armor, and now the tank's actually really good. But did it work for the BT-7? Sorry, the BTSV. Um, I would say no, because it wasn't ever used. But the problem with the BTSV is, because of this new armor thing, you got two major things that come out. The first one is, you can't fit ga uh, fuel tanks in the back. The fuel tanks need to be moved to the sides where they will catch on fire and they take up space. And because of that and also the very, very, very rectangular shape of the BTSV, the tracks don't perform as well. Now the tracks do need to be narrower, but on the BT-7, actually on all the BT, uh, BT series, the front of the tracks are actually curved inwards like this. So it enables it to turn better because, um, well, it's just how the suspension allows it to turn better. but. It's just when it's curved inwards, you're able to turn with much better um, mobility. Because the tank tracks, like the whole section of the tracks, will curve a little bit inwards. And it allows you to turn much better. Now, the BTSV, the way it is, you can't do that because of the rectangular nature. Um, it's not curved in, so the tracks are actually pretty close to the edge. So there's not much room here for the track to move. Like sloped armor, the tracks can't extend that way and these go in because of the sloped armor you can see it's kind of hard to see but you can still see the tracks can't move in that far because there's a sloped armor plate right here 
Um, they're inside the tank. They can't move that well. They don't have the mobility where the BT-7, it's on the outside, and you can turn it into up to 12 degrees on the BT-7. These, the whole track length will turn up to 12 degrees inwards, and that allows it to turn much better. On this thing, it doesn't. So basically what you're trying to do is go forward with this and stop with this when you're turning, and the whole thing's got to scrape its way across instead of turning a little bit. And that kind of negates the effect that the Christie suspension has on it. And it really makes turning very, very slow. And you, you can already tell, the tracks are very, very thin, so turning is really hard. Now, the traverse speed is 33 degrees per second. Now, I would say that is overestimating it. It turns a lot slower. This is one of the worst traverse of all tanks. But let's move on to, well, the nickname of it. It's called the BTSV in real life. And I don't know, you might call it the funny eye tank or the whatever tank. It resembles a turtle. That's what the Soviet engineers thought. It does resemble a turtle. It does have a shell, but it was actually amphibious in real life. It could go underwater, which was great. However, in World of Tanks, it cannot, so don't drown yourself. It's very stupid. Um, not much to mention about the tank. It's got a massive 500 horsepower engine, which gives it a great horsepower to ton of... Um, 38.14, which means you can really accept, accelerate to the 62 km an hour top speed very fast, very efficiently. But that's kind of all it can really do. It can go in a straight line very fast. It can't turn well. And the gun is very lackluster. You can see a tier 2 gun here. We'll look at it more in Tank Inspector. But this tank, it's not that good. But let's look at some better stats in Tank Inspector right now. Okay, so now we're in Tank Inspector, and lucky for me, I can actually get on this because Tank Inspector is a Chinese program. It's kind of ironic. It's, it'd be banned if it was not. Anyway, uh, Tank Inspector will tell us that the armor is not phenomenal, is what we thought it was. Now, it is 25 all around, so look over here. It seems like you see a lot of red, you could get really excited, but it's only 25 on the front, 20 on the side, and 16 on the rear. The roof is 10. Nothing really special, but the turret itself is 25 as well, all the way around. So the turret, it's not bad. It's actually quite well angled. Um, Space armor on the side, nothing too special, but you're looking at six, uh, six millimeters of hull armor because it is a weak spot back there. You can see sort of it's green. You can kind of see in there. So when you go through the tracks, it is green, but space armor does provide 20, so it's decently good. And it also goes through the uh, tracks. So not only is that 20 there, you get 20 and then the tracks and then the 6 millimeters of armor on the back. So it's really three layers of armor. It's kind of hard to go through it. High explosive will not do anything to this tank when you hit here. Anyway, so it does have weak spots. Not really any major ones. It's a 20 millimeter weak spot on the left side. So, I mean, if you're having problems penetrating the BTSV, really you should shoot the turret. But if you can't, then shoot this little, um, well, let's look here. You see a little driver's... I think there's a driver's hatch. It's hard to tell. It looks really, really weird. But you, you can kind of see it's like a patch. You shoot there, it's quite weak. Shoot the sides, it's quite weak as well. So, yeah, the, the tank can be quite weak. Now, a lot of people think that sloped armor is quite strong. It, they'd be mistaken. Sloped armor isn't that strong. But uh, if you see, for example, the side, you would expect that this piece here is flatter. So you shoot there. But as I said before, it's three layers of armor. So you're looking at about 46 45 to 46 millimeters. Yeah, it'd be 46 no matter why. Um, millimeters of armor if you hit this slightly angled down. But it, it's angled down on the po to the point that it doesn't even matter, to be honest. Um, the sides, they're quite weak, but you just need to be careful. It's 22. Now, the thing is with the front, it's, 30, it's about 30 uh, millimeters, 30 to 35 millimeters of armor. If you can hit this flat part right here, it's good. But sometimes it's hard to hit that. So, I mean, you need to have 33 millimeters of pen. And at tier 3, you're probably going to have that, to be completely honest. Lower plate, just pretty much as strong. There's a little flat part here. If you're really struggling, try to hit that flat part. But, I mean, you shouldn't really have problems with the BTSV. If it's facing you like this, you, it's easy to penetrate. Um, the problem with the BTSV is the fact that if you get it on a weird angle, it, the, it, it can kind of mess you up a little bit. Now, here, if, if you're facing like on a 45 degree angle, yeah, let's get, make the, yeah, it's perfectly 45. You look at 30, about 35 around here. You can hit like a 6 there. Hitting the track is very weak right here. But it's consistently 30 all around. And you, you really don't think that that's good armor. Like, when I was looking in the um, tank inspector before, I thought this was just crap armor. Like, the, what's the point of having the BTSV? Like, 
it's basically a BT-7 with tiny bit better armor, but it turns horribly. So I just thought to myself, I'd rather have the BT-7, and I probably would, given this whole review. But the armor is definitely not the weak spot here. And when you see the turret is actually 25 all the way around and it's sloped, it still is, the turret is the weaker spot to hit. So try to hit the turret here quite weak um don't hit spaced armor like the gun or anything and it looks kind of weird it looks like it's got goggles on that is headlights but yeah i mean the armor it's decent so let's look at um let's look at some things about it now rt mentioned the mobility of it it's quite fast the horsepower the average horsepower in tier 3 light tanks is 255 horsepower this thing has 500 it's like it's almost double the average horsepower. So this thing is ridiculously fast. Specific power, it's almost double as well. This thing is just, it goes so well. But the traverse speed, it is atrocious. 33 degrees a second. That's already 10 degrees less than the average tier 3 light tank. Um, top speed, 62. It, it gets there pretty fast. Terrain resistance is pretty bad, but you don't really notice it. I mean, you can hit 62 really fast just because of that specific power. But like I said, the turning, if you need to turn you are going to suck at turning, just because it's so slow. Um, nothing really to say about this. Maneuverability. The gun, statistically, it's quite good, even though overall it's bad. Um, very accurate for a light tank at tier 3. Aim time is ridiculously low, 1.6. Um, the gun spread is not bad at all. It's quite good. Everything is good. Gun depression, though, minus 4. It's quite bad, but you never notice it. But yeah, it is... I mean, it is quite bad, but... The accuracy of the gun, all that stuff is great. Now, when I say this, it's great. It's it's actually not that great. And I'll explain why later. Firepower, though. Well, let's look at over here. Um, it's a premium tank, so we don't need to look at different guns. So we'll just stay in tank inspector looking at the firepower. Penetration is 51. That is about average, but it's still... It's lackluster, to say the least. Damage, that's yeah, about average. DPM, though, is not average. It's a little bit below average. DPM, it, the gun does not seem like a huge problem. Um, if anything, it's just the penetration that's bad. Um, module damage, like all this stuff is just quite simple. Really, the thing that kills you with the gun is the penetration and the accuracy. And the accuracy is not bad because of the gun. It's bad because of the tank. And it's just because of the top speed. Scoutability, bad, horrible, horrible, horrible view range. Bad signal distance. This thing is not a scout, believe it or not. You'd think it's a scout with that kind of specific power, but you just it's like a PZ-1C. You run around and you just have fun. Now, I wish this tank had a derp gun. If this had a derp gun, it'd be great, but it doesn't. It's got a tier 2 gun. Yeah, it's, it's just it's not that special. But let's get into some gameplay. Okay, guys, so our first game is going to be on Corellia. Tier 3 game, so let's just let's get this started. Now, the thing is the BTSB, which I'm going to show you reasoning later in a different video you need to just drive around and shoot people now it seems kind of weird and kind of obvious but i mean you literally need to just drive around get in their face shoot people look at that jump there though um guys didn't really see it in its full glory but i would say i jumped at least a meter in the air and landed flat on my tracks they did not fall off the tracks seem quite durable on this tank which is kind of ironic but yeah it, it holds together now we see this uh pc38 t sorry 35t um, a Mark III, we don't really want to run, chase them down too much because I do have problems penetrating the 35T, but we don't see anyone else there, so don't have much of an option. We can take this at Mark III. Mark III is going to be an easy kill. First shot bounces. Second shot goes in. Um, this is, by the way, this is all auto in. Third shot goes in. Um, 38, sorry, the 35T starts shooting at us. We're going to finish off the Mark III. Um, it's a Mark III. It does not have armor, so you just kind of just auto aim and it'll go in. But this is the problem with the auto aim. Uh, I'll show you my camera view here. Now they do take out my driver. The 35T is on pretty much low health, and I'm bouncing a lot of his shells. It, it's just a machine gun that's shooting at me. But I've now bounced four shells in a row, I believe, off him pretty much. So I do need to aim, hit the lower plate. Uh, I do get it. M3 over there. We're gonna kill him, and I think that's gonna be it for this game, really. Uh, yeah, we're going to try to kill this M2, but it's going to run out of health. 5 to 1. Once you get 5 to 1, generally in the Chinese server, the whole game just ends so fast. So we're going to kill this M2. Um, and now PZ, uh, PZ2's got good armor. I can't penetrate. Going to try to get that... Um, well, we tried to get the... I can't even tell what tank that was. I believe it's Type 97, but I'm not too sure. Uh, we kind of wanted to kill it just because with this tank... 
if you look, um, leave the tanks behind you, they can penetrate your rear quite easily. Now, I made a mistake there by going backwards. I thought they had a good reverse speed, but I was wrong. The reverse speed on this game, sorry, on this tank is not that good. But we did manage to pick up four kills. Um, did about 600 damage. What replays isn't really working, so I can't show you the post-game stats. But, yeah, this tank, I mean, you're going to go in and die fast. I died within the first two minutes, and it's really what this tank is for. I, I mean, I, I guarantee I picked up top score in that game. Uh, it was just, it was a really simple game. You just rush in, kill a few people. And because of that rush, we pretty much won the middle flank. Um, right's going to go down and left's going to go down. I guarantee that's a, well, I know that is a win. So, yeah, that, that's how this tank really does influence things, at least on the Chinese server. I'm not too sure if it would behave the same on the North American or European server. But on the Chinese server, you need to rush in and factor the game right away and then get your damage, do your damage, just because... This tank really does not have the power to be flanking people. It's kind of, that's a bad thing because of its turn speed is so bad. You cannot flank people. You need to get right up in their faces, put a couple shots, go to the next tank, get a couple shots, just zip around the battlefield. Kind of like a PZ1C, be an annoyance. Okay, so our next replay is going to be on Ensk. Um, there's, well, you can already imagine the strategy I'm going to employ here. Basically, rush down the uh, 890 line just because you're a light tank. That's kind of what they do. You don't want to stick around the city too much. And this tank just needs its open space to breathe. Like, if it's in the city, light tanks can be good in the city in the sense that you just run around, like maybe go down um, the one line turn at D1, go through a couple of the spots, j just zip around, flanking people. And I, I like doing that in my high tier light tanks. But this thing cannot turn. Just don't try turning. Like, watch that turn. Like, with most tanks you can turn right away it's quite slow and just pay attention to all these small adjustments because they do take a while to turn um, th these games are all so fast that's the thing with low tiers on the Chinese server it's just so fast and the BTSV is no exception guts everything done fast dies way before everyone else but it leaves its mark that's the thing with it so try to watch this turn now I get to 62 kilometers an hour quite fast so I assume that there's no one really in the field so I'm gonna rush the field and you're gonna, you guys are going to see the armor of this tank. Now, first shot misses, and it was an auto-aim. They do bounce their shot, and that's kind of what this tank is for. I mean, you're going to miss your lot of shots. It, even though statistically it's quite accurate, you are going to miss so many shots because you're returning, and your turret traverse is not good. But now we got a BT-2 firing at us. It bounces a lot of our shells. Uh, we've probably bounced a good 20 shells already, and we've only lost 60 health, not even 60 health, so... Now we're going to take down this Chiha. Chiha bounces off the front plate, which Chiha's got pretty good pen, so I don't know why it's bouncing, but you can just see this armor is really holding up. Now we're going to kill the BT2. The Chiha does our, have our back plate, which is a huge mistake, but watch watch me try to turn. Watch this turning speed. Um, it's just better to just drive forward to get away somewhere. You don't want to pivot all the way around. With most tanks, I would have pivoted all the way around, but you just can't do it here. But the BT-2 bounces all the shots. We hit the shot on the move, which is good. Now we try to take down this artillery. Getting around him is pretty easy. Finish him off. But I want to kill that Chiha still, because he can penetrate me anywhere. I don't know why he was bouncing so often, but RM-2 takes him down. And now we kind of want to see what else. It's 9-1 to one already. This is such a, a blowout win. And it's kind of a blowout win because we won City, but I also wrecked Field. Um, picking up three kills, and um, out of nowhere, a T-82 appears. Yeah, um, I guess I was spotted a while back, and it was kind of a, it was a good shot by him. But we finished with three kills, probably about 400 damage again, and we really influenced the tide of that battle. I mean, we won city because we had more tanks city. However, we won field even though there was only three tanks field against, um, well, what did we have? We got the three that I killed, and then there must have been at least two others. So we really won field 3v5, and that's kind of what this tank is about. Like, you can take on, as long as it's tier 3, you can take on more tanks than you're used to fighting because you can go so fast. You can dodge around them, distract one or two of them, kill a third one, and then your teammates are going to help you out. So once again... Fast game, I died just over two minutes into the game. However, just over two minutes into the game, it's already 10 to 2. It's just, this whole thing is about speed. Do things fast, as fast as you can. Get as much damage as fast as you can. Okay, guys, so our final game is going to be on Corellia again. Um, not, too, not, not anything too special in this matchmaking. This game is going to be longer, and what I want to do here is 
at, what you saw in the first two replays is me rushing in, doing a, quite a bit of damage for tier 3, dying but winning the flank, 3 minutes maybe, game's over. Um, I'm usually dead after 2 minutes, but the game's already like 10 to 1 after 2 minutes. It's just, it's so fast, so violent, and it's done. Super fast game. Now, I was starting to think, is that how you're supposed to play this tank? Or am I just a noob suicide scouting and doing well? But this game I decided to play it passively. Now, they've got quite a bit of tier 3s, so I don't have the huge advantage as I normally would. But we're, we're going to try to play it passively. Use the gun to this then. And we're going to see how the gun performs. Because really what all we're doing is testing the speed and the decoy ability. The gun is just, I mean, your tier 3 you're going to penetrate pretty much everything. So the gun is just going to sit there gonna spit on people and it's gonna do its thing like any gun in this game could really do anything but here you can see uh, Chinese server so everyone rushes middle doesn't really make any sense but we try to get some shots and the accuracy here is not that good we're finding out that the accuracy just does not hold up and when you do hit, get shots in which I haven't hit a single shot the penetration just does not hold up it we're firing at what I believe 300 meters or 200 meters the penetration will not hold up at these kind of distances so we need to close the gap and maybe snipe. I'm, I was hoping, and I didn't look at the stats of this tank. I was hoping to get some spots. Did not realize I've only got a 280 view range. This tank is just, it's bad for scouting. It is definitely not a scout. I thought it could have been there. But then about there, I realized that if I can't see those tanks now, I will never see them. So let's get out of there. It's two, two, um, two, not two against two, but it's, uh, the score is two, two. Now, I don't really want to sit around for too long because it's very Chinese-like for your team to just wait 10 seconds and you've already down 10 tanks. So, we want to push the tide of this game. And low tier, this is what it's about. You need to push the tide, get the decisive victory, and then you can do whatever. And it's usually a fast game. But we're already two minutes into the game. I've taken no damage. I've done no damage. Quite uncharacteristic for me. I mean, in... 15 seconds maybe or 10 seconds all have died in both games at this point compared to where I am now without even doing any damage but six to four already I mean the game these games end so fast you need to do your damage within the first two minutes and now there's not really anything left there's only just over half the enemy team left so where are you gonna get your damage from it's looking like a very uneventful game now we've made it to the base unseen and there's a tank back there, but we don't really want to face it because it is a D2, and D2s have great armor for tier 3, so we're going to avoid it. This game still, it could go either way. It really can, just because of the way Chinese games go. But we're going to get the snipe on the um, tier 2 German artillery, and of course, it does 51 average damage. I missed those two shots. Well, not miss, but I low roll on both shots. And of course, I leave him on one health, but he, I finished him off. Now, that's, all, that's the only damage I've done. Now we see a Churchill GC. We're, we're really just cleaning up the artillery because in games like this, the artillery can matter. But um, line fire, I've auto-aimed and missed two. Third one goes in. Um, now, we're, this was kind of unexpected for me. He hides behind the rock. We do bounce a shell from the middle. Um, I believe that was T-127. Anyway, we're going to try to flank around and kill this artillery. This artillery is running. Now watch this shot, and this is really the penetration. Now, that doesn't seem like it hit, but it actually bounced off the back of the Churchill GC. Sorry, Church, not Churchill GC. The Lloyd GC. It just... The penetration of this gun is really, really bad. Um, 10 to 6 now. Now we're going to start to do our damage. Try to get around. And you can see here the... Look at the traverse speed. Look how bad that is. And the tank doesn't traverse well. But the Chiha, which has really good penetration, is just failing to penetrate me. Now, it, I don't think it's got the top gun, but still. I mean... The armor on this thing can really be really funny just because people don't really know where to aim and even though statistically the armor is bad, it holds up. So in all three replays, you've seen me hold up with my armor. We're going to try to get the kill on the, these two tanks over here and this is where the gun can excel. It's quite rare. The gun is really just bad, but the gun can excel if you are straight on against the target. You can penetrate every shot because that rate of fire is good, but then again, all tier threes have that kind of rate of fire. So. The gun, it's really lackluster. You saw me bounce off an artillery, of all things. A tier 2 artillery, and I bounced. Anyway, the T-127, definitely at base, because it just killed an artillery and killed a bunch of people at base. So we got to go back. Um, I didn't think we had anything at base, so I thought it was going to cap out. But 13 to 8, the game's pretty much over. I don't want to deal with the D-2, so I'd rather deal with the 127. 
and you're going to see just how well this tank can brawl. Now, we've got four converging on cap. They're going to kill the D2, and they could easily come back here, but I guess they're going to be too lazy, and they're not going to do anything. But just check out that acceleration. I just I zipped up to 62. It consistently goes 62. D2 is now dead, so now it's just me at Churchill. Sorry, a Lloyd GC. Once again, saying Churchill. Against uh, 127. 127 takes out the artillery, so it's just me versus him. We're both on full health. He puts a good shot into me. Uh, the T127 has a good gun. So, I mean, it, it's really going to do some damage to me. Now, he bounces a second shell. It was kind of lucky because I hit a bump and he must have hit a bad angle on me. But this traverse, I mean, look at how bad this is. If I turned the other way, I'd be dead. Like, I was smart turning that way. I shouldn't have closed in there. And it's just the penetration can't do anything against mediocrely armored. Like, for tier 3, I guess that is quite well armored, but... It really does not have the armor um, that some heavier tanks have and yet still we stand here and can't penetrate them and that's because the 51 millimeters of penetration it's just it doesn't work on this tank um, I'd be okay with a high penetrating gun that does low damage low rate of fire I'd be happy with that because at least you get your shots in but this thing does not have amazing DPR, DPM and the penetration is just so lackluster you definitely cannot brawl. So if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to lose every time because this tank just can't turn and it can't penetrate. It's really sad, but that's just how this tank works, or I guess doesn't work. Um, what, it, what it's made for, and as you saw in this game, I lasted almost six minutes. It's made for rushing in, getting as much damage as you can, and you're going to win. Ten, you're going to win 15 to 1, 15 to 2 when you do that because you mess up a whole flank and then... Like, tanks are still getting into position. Say, on this map, for example, if you get a normal North American loadout, you have half the people, probably more than half the people, go in the south side, um, like the southeast. And some people go in northwest, and no one goes middle. Say, for example, I go northwest, where a light tank normally would go. Um, kind of what we did. We pushed through there, maybe they send three or four tanks, and I can quickly get those kills. Or the back my backup gets the kills, I distract the people. And then we've already won this flank, and maybe we're a minute into the game. We flank around, kill the artillery at two minutes, and at three minutes, the tanks still on the north, sorry, southeast, they're still setting up and getting ready to snipe at people. We've already flanked them, and now they're fighting on two fronts. The game's four minutes in, and we've won 15 to two, maybe. And that's what this tank really does. It disrupts flanks, and it is the best flanker in the game because of how it works. But it is not a brawler, and it cannot ha um, work this way. If it's got any kind of enclosed space, it just doesn't work because it can't turn. And if it's got to face people face head on, it can't penetrate. So, yeah, this tank, it's it's kind of like a PZ-1C, to be completely honest with you. But PZ-1C has better turning. And I guess the gun on the PZ-1C is actually better. So, really, to me, this is just an, a Russian crappier PZ-1C. That's how I see it. But let's um, well, let's go back into our garage and we'll discuss about this tank a little bit more. So guys, what do you guys think about the BTSV? You saw three very quick, well, two very quick, one decently long replays about it. And you got to see how, just how fast this tank can really accelerate. Like, in a straight line, this is one of the best tanks in the game, I would say. The power to rate 40, pretty much, that's unmatched. That's like LTTB kind of speed, or um, I just can't think of anything that's that fast. It is just, it's so incredibly fast. But it can't turn. It really just it can't turn. It's because historically it couldn't turn well because of the design. But it just this thing. It's just it's too slow. It really is too slow for me. Um, sure, fast line tanks work, but you need to have good power to weight, good top speed, and good traverse. That's my three things. I mean, look at some other tanks. For example, the PZ1C turns decently, great top speed, but doesn't have the best power to weight. Um, it's still pretty good. But it doesn't get going up to 72 the whole time. Whereas something like um, my WZ-132, I know it's tier 8, so it's a huge difference. But, I mean, it doesn't go 72. No, of course not. But it does go 62 everywhere, the whole map. It does, because it's got amazing, 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 I think it's 0.5 terrain resistance. Great power to weight at 24, I believe. It's just, it really does work. And this tank, the power to weight is amazing. It's unheard of, almost. 
top speed is great. Uh, 62 is not PZ1C great, but it's still really good. But the terrain resistance and the tra traverse, it does not work. It's mainly the traverse that kills me. I mean, you get to you go very fast. You get to the split, uh, spot you want to be, but you can't scout and you can't flank people properly. Like you can't get close up flank and brawl. The only thing you can do is like flank a whole entire line of tanks and shoot them from the rear. So I guess I guess it's kind of like a metaphor in on itself. This tank can't turn fast. It's got to make wide turns. So when you're flanking people, you got to make wide flanks. As in, you got to come in from the back to penetrate them. So don't think of your turns as like a couple meters in front of you. Think of your turns as like a hundred meter turn on the map. And that's kind of what you need to do. I mean, you got to go straight line, straight line. And if you need to turn and change your direction, you need to turn over a couple hundred meters because you just lose too much speed. If you're engaged in tanks, you're going to lose speed. They're going to hit you. They're going to be able to aim well. This tank's armor works great when you're going 62 because you don't know where you're going to hit. Maybe you're going to fire a shot at the unangled uh, spot here, but when it hits the tank, maybe you're looking at him like this and you just missed your shot. You messed it up really badly. And the armor, even though it's only about 35 total, I mean, that can hold up in tier threes if you know what you're doing. Um, it does, I guess, get premium, uh, premium matchmaking, um, at least on the server it does. I'm not, I don't know if it does on North American server. I really don't, but I would assume it does. Um, but this, this tank, I just, I can't recommend this tank. Like maybe if you need a light tank, a fun Soviet light tank for crew training, but I mean, the Valentine too, I mean, the Valentine too is definitely not good. It's not fast, but it's a decent tank compared to this. And that says a lot because Valentine two is not a decent tank. Um, T127, it's a, I like that tank a lot. So stuff like that, it works very well. Maybe when we get the new tier 7 or 8 premium light tank from the Soviets, that will be good. Um, that won't come for a while, but it might happen. But this thing, I just... It's so hard for me to recommend this tank because it's not a true scout tank. This is a gimmick tank. It is super rare. It looks funny. It looks like it's got goggles on. It's an amphibious tank. It's... It looks hilarious, but no, it's not good. That's the answer. It's just, it's not good. So when you ask yourself, is it worth $100? You got to really ask yourself, is that, it's, is that 100 gold worth it for me? Because really that 100 gold is better than the BTSV. Now, BTSV was never sold ever except for in Russia in box sets. Now, back then it was rare. And yeah, BTSV is cool to have. But now that they've introduced it as part of a super bundle, this super rare tank that will never go on sale again, just like the KV-220, will, might even come as a free tank, the mission that you can grind out or something. The KV-220, remember how rare that thing was? And now it's it's on sale for normal prices, and it's not special anymore. This is kind of how this thing will be. All tanks will come back, maybe even the Type 59. So hold your money, guys. If you need that 100 if, if you actually want that $100 worth of gold, get it. Get this tank. It's a great deal. This is a very rare tank for now. But... If you don't need the 100 gold, don't get this. Sorry, not 100 gold, $100 worth of gold. Don't get this tank. It's not worth it. You won't like it. You, you may like it, but I mean, you, it's not good. Um, I, I know someone who just bought this tank, and they love it. They think the gun's amazing, but the gun is just, it's crap. Um, the Traverse is crap. It, it's just, it's really not worth it. Um, well, let's just look at this. I've never played the T20, T46 on this uh, account it just happens to be there because the person who had this before liked it this is a better tank th than the btsv it's got a better gun um it's almost just as fast yeah this th this tank here is just way better so i mean i can't justify this at all this is just it's a rare tank but it's the worst of the rare ones i mean the pz2j is definitely better the mtls is ridiculously better than all the other tanks <laughs> Um, SU-85i is better, 76i is overpowered, but this thing, it's, it's underpowered, it really is, it doesn't work, it's like the TOG though, that's honestly how I view it, if you would spend $100 on a TOG, get this, you would love it, because this is the party tank, if you've got a platoon of three of them, it's going to be hilarious, but it's going to suck, that's the thing, so, yeah, guys, take your, uh, your own conclusions from this, I don't like it, and I've played quite a bit of games on it, but, yeah, uh, I can't recommend it. Definitely don't buy it if you ask me. Once again, get it if you're going to get that $100 worth of gold. If you're not going to get it, don't even look at this tank. It is not special. I guess I could have been using APCR. We didn't check the credit cost of it. Um, 800 credits, it's not bad, but...
still, the APCR penetration is just, uh, I guess it could work, but the gun, the penetration of the gun is a problem, but it's not so much that. It's more the accuracy and the turning. The turning is what really kills me, so, yeah, we can't really fix that. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this replay. I hope that maybe you like something about this replay and you want to get the BTSV, but maybe I saved you $100 because this tank is just, it's a trophy tank. That's kind of all it is. Um, and then in a couple months when this tank is being sold for five, ten dollars, nothing special anymore, it won't be a trophy tank. So yes, last year or a few months ago, this is special. Now it is not special. And whenever Wargaming has these special events where you can pay a hundred dollars and get this amazing tank, don't trust it because it, it might not be that special later on. So yeah, guys, save up your money. Save up your money. You might end up seeing a Type 59 on sale. So don't get this tank. Save it up. I'm not saying there will be a Type 59 on sale, but there could be. This thing is definitely worth the money. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys in my next World of Tanks video.